What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. This tutorial we're just going to kind of cover um, a topic that I know we've covered in the past, but I thought I would just update it a little bit and maybe present it in a, in a slightly different way. And this topic is about the importance of uh, scales and knowing what, what scale you're dealing in and how that can help you to make songs that sound good. Okay, I'm not saying that they're always going to be great songs that you're going to get just by knowing this information. But the information here is very basic and it's kind of the building block for making great songs. Because all great songs will follow some of the theory and techniques um, that I'm going to show you. Um, maybe not the techniques because I'm going to do a lot of pointing and clicking. But you never know. You could get something really good just with pointing and clicking and, uh, and and whatnot. But what I really want you guys to understand is the idea and the theory behind what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Okay, so um, basically, um, let me just kind of summarize where, where we should be or where you should be in understanding to get the most out of this video. One, you should understand what notes are. Uh, two, you should understand how notes uh, make up a scale. And three, you should understand how notes and a scale help you to make chords that will work together, a.k.a. Uh, chord progressions, okay? Now, I have tutorials on all those those things, so if anything confuses you here, uh, you can go back and search for those on, on my YouTube page and uh, and then come back to this and maybe it'll, it'll make a little more sense to you, okay? But uh, what I have on the screen is uh, basically um, just one pattern. We're just going to do all our work in this one pattern. And what I've done is I've loaded up in the piano roll. I'll just kind of compress this down so we can see. It is a um, chord progression. And the chord progression here uh, is an A minor. Basically, this is the A minor chord, A, C, and E. The second chord playing is an F major, F, A, and C. The third chord playing is a C major. Normally a C major would be presented as C, E, and G, uh, but in this case what I've done is I've taken the G, which would normally be up here, and I've put it down here, which is an inverted chord. Again, I've got a tutorial on inverted chords if you want to go check it out. And then our last chord here is a G major, it's G, B, and D. Okay, so when we play this, um, let me solo this, and you'll just hear the progression as it, as it currently is. Okay, now in this case, all of these, all of these uh, notes that are making up these chords are within uh, an A minor scale or a C major scale. They're interchangeable in that uh, they have the same notes in them. What makes it, uh, in this case, the A minor scale is the fact that I'm actually starting on an A minor chord. But basically, an A minor uh, chord would be all the, all the white keys on a piano keyboard starting on the A. Okay, so... There we have that. Now, um, these chords, I want to add to them now. This is kind of like the base of my song. This is how my song is going to go, the basic feeling to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, and now I want to add a bass line, right? I get this question a lot. You know, how do you do a bass line? Well, I do a bass line by trying to play a bass line on my MIDI keyboard. But you don't have to uh, know how to play to do an, an effective bass line. You can watch my tutorial on that for more specifics, but let's just go in for the time being and let's just try to click one up. So what I've got here is a second channel, massive number two. This has a bass sound in it. Okay, so I'm just going to go into the piano roll for this. And you can see on the screen, I can actually see the... Uh, the chords from my other channel here, uh, Ghosted. It's called a uh, Ghost Channel. And uh, I can see the notes here. To turn this on, you would go under your, um, 
your menu here and go to uh, helpers and then select ghost channels. Make sure it's checked. Alt V is the uh, quick key to do that. So Alt V will turn that off and on for you. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I want to make a baseline. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so I can work a little bit better, get some better snap on my notes. <clears throat> but what I want to do is I want to work against the root notes. Okay, so I'm going to draw a note right there on my root. And probably one there, one there. And then I'm going to stick within my chords mostly. So while I'm still in this chord, I'm just going to go up a note and down a note. Okay, so it's basically one, two, one, two, three. See that? It's just a pattern, right? One, two, one, two, three. Um, and it's, you know, a rhythm, a, 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 a certain rhythm. And I'm going to repeat that rhythm here. I'm going to go one, two, one, two, three. Okay. You see, I'm just clicking, right? Um, now up here, remember the C was my root note. So I'm going to hit one, two, one, two, three. Okay. And then finally, we're back here. One, two, one, two. And on this one, I'm going to change it up because I like doing change ups at the end of, uh, bars or measures. So I'm just going to go up. So instead of one, two, one, two, three, I was going one, two, one, two, three, four, right? Okay. So let's, let's hear what it sounds like. Let me, let me solo that one now. And we'll just hear what, what this one sounds like. Okay. So now you can hear it sounds very familiar because it's just like the chord progression. The only thing is we've added some notes and some rhythm to it. It's not just one solid note, right? But obviously it doesn't sound like a bass because I use the ghosted chords from the other channel, which were in a higher octave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do control cursor down. It's going to drop it one octave, two octaves down. And then let's take a listen. So it sounds a lot more bassy now, right? Okay, so then we're going to move on. Actually, let's listen to it now with the chords. You can hear they sound good together because they have the same notes, they have the same chords, they have the same scale. It's all working together, you know, and that's, that's important. Okay, so now let's try to write a little, some kind of melody, simple melody, uh, to go with this as well. So now I've got another sound loaded. Um, kind of like, a, what is that, an uh, accordion or something, right? So now we've got that. <clears throat> let's go into the piano roll for this. And again, we've got our ghost notes on. I'm going to go back up to where my chords are. And uh, remember, there's a, there's my chords. I'm going to zoom in again and, and so I can work in this area. And here, I'm going to uh, drag out the note like about that much. And I'm going to do the root notes all uh, pretty much that, that length, right? So I'm going to go A, and then over here, you see, I'm going to do that one. Then over here, remember, it's the C, and then finally, in the last chord, it's going to be the G. So we'll do that. Okay, now I'm going to use that as a guide, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to uh, work my way to the, to the next note. So here, while I may be on the A, I'm going to try to work my way down to the F. Let me uh, shorten this up a little bit so we can see that. Now, one thing you'll notice is even though I'm using an A minor chord, it's only three notes. There are other keys that belong in the scale. For example, over here, you can see the G is in the scale. And over here, you can see that the B is in the scale. So I can use those as kind of transition notes to get to the to the F 
if I need to. And what I, what I, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards from the F. So from the F, I'm going to do a G. I'm going to do that. And then because I know my B is in there, I'm going to go B. And let me see. Maybe I'll drag this one out a little bit more like so. Okay, let me just get a preview of how that's going to sound. Let me turn that channel on. So it sounds all right. Okay, so that's kind of the formula I'm going to use. These are actually going to be a little bit longer than I thought. Okay, but now I'm going to work my way from the F up to the C, right? So we're going to do a little a little walking up there. And we're going to work my way uh, backwards from the C when I do the notes. So the next note in the scale from the C, if I go down, I can tell it's the B. So I'm going to go ahead and sign that. And I'm going to shorten it up. Uh, then it's this one. And then the G. So you can see I'm going down. I'm going up to this one. Now I've got to come back down to this one. So let's go backwards from here. We go A, down to the B. Now here, obviously, I don't want to use the same one, so I'll just go to the one higher up there. Okay, then uh, finally, we want to work our way back around to the beginning. Uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, instead of doing three notes like I've done here, I'm going to sh I'm going to sh shorten this one up. Uh, to exactly the halfway mark here and then I'm gonna do four notes going up and then down so I'm gonna go here oh, gotta change the side I'm gonna go there 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 okay and I like to do that because it's just a little bit of change of pace it's almost the same but it's different enough that when it comes back around it's gonna kind of give it a, help it sound a little fresh uh, okay so there it is. Let's hear what that sounds like on its own. Okay, again, it's in the same keys. It's in, you know, the right progression and everything. And even though the uh, pattern of it's a little bit different, um, it still sounds good. So now let's hear it with all the three instruments together and let's see how they, 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 meld in together. Okay, now from here, we can make a little bit of improvement, I think. Um, one thing that strikes me is that this, even though it sounds like it's in a higher key, uh, key or register, um, it's still kind of occupying the same space as my chord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do control cursor up to knock it up an octave so now it's kind of in its own space the bass of course is two octaves lower so that's in its own space and now um, let's go to the bass for one second also the bass here it sounds a little bit choppy uh, let me just solo this okay so what I might want to do with that is to make it to fill it in a little bit is uh, add a little bit of, uh, of uh, echo or delay and I'm just going to echo it a little bit and what it's going to do basically I'm, I'm setting the time to two and the feed to uh, approximately 30 percent but what that's going to do is it's going to basically play a note inside of each one of these spaces here okay it's almost going to play it like if it was double time but each note each echo note is going to be at a much lower volume so it's not going to sound uh, it's not going to sound like it's just a straight boom 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 it's going to be uh, a little variation in the notes between each other so it's it, i think it's going to sound a little smoother let's just listen and see if it's going to be that way yeah so definitely it sounds a little bit better that way so now let's hear all the instrumentation again We could add some some drums. Okay. 
and then you could build from there. You know, obviously I'm just doing three simple instruments and just giving you the technique, but you could take it from there. You could make the, uh, the melody <clears throat> twice as long. You can, um, you know, try to reverse it. You can try to chop up your chord so they're not just holding down the chord, you know, the whole time, but maybe it's playing the chords in a rhythm, whatever you want to do. The point I want you to get from all this is just to notice how we took um, one instrument that we built from and we stuck to that game plan. We stuck to the scale. We stuck to the chord progression. Okay. And then we gave our other instruments their own space. Bass is very low. We gave our accordion sound much higher. Our, our chords were kind of in the middle. And by doing these things, they work together yet also have some separation. You know, they don't play the same um, timing. Uh, sometimes they play the same notes. Sometimes they don't, you know, it, so it, it's all about fitting everything together and overlapping things in a way that at least they sound good. May not be a hit, granted, but, you know, as long as you know kind of the, the idea behind everything being in key, it's going to be really easy for you to make stuff that sounds good. And uh, really, that's important. That's super important. So I hope you guys could take this information, learn with it, run with it, do a lot more with it than what I just showed you, because really, you guys are the ones who are going to take this uh, to the next level. I'm just here to show you little things here and there and let you guys run with it and do your thing. So have fun. Zen Effect saying, I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.